Good morning. Welcome to St. Karen as we prepare to celebrate the most holy sacrifice of the Mass. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. In the first reading, Peter witnesses that Jesus, who was handed over out of ignorance, was raised from the dead and is fulfillment of the prophets. In the second reading, John exhorts his community not to commit sin and to keep God's commandments. In the gospel, Jesus appears to the disciples, shows them his hands and feet, and eats in front of them. And now, so that we may worship together, not as strangers, but as friends, please stand and greet those around you. Good morning, everyone. Let's continue our prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we continue the Easter season, we're blessed to have two babies uh, who are being baptized and welcomed into the faith this day. This Mass is also being live streamed uh, so that uh, family in Italy uh, can watch this baptism as well and be a part of it. So, benvenuti all'Italia. And that's about as much Italian as you're going to get out of me. <laughs> as we come before our God this day, we rejoice in the Lord's infinite goodness, and we ask the Lord to bless us in our time of prayer. The readings remind us of the importance of the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Yet so often we discount the Spirit. We don't even think about the Holy Spirit. We definitely don't pray with the Holy Spirit. And so we ask our God for His mercy and His forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have found, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together now, let us sing of the glory of God. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If the parents and godparents could remain standing, please. Dear parents and godparents, your family has experienced great joy at the birth of your child. The church shares your happiness. Today, this joy is brought to you, has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your child, to celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. This community rejoices with you, for today the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased. And we offer you our, spirit, our support in raising your child in the practice of the faith. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves to participate in this celebration, listening to God's word, praying for, this chi- for these children and for their families, renewing our commitment to the Lord and to his people. Hey, what name have you given your child? Seraphina. And what do you ask of God's church for Seraphina? What name have you given your child? And what do you ask of God's church for Vito? In asking for baptism for your child, you are undertaking the responsibility of raising them in the faith so that keeping God's commandments, they may love the Lord and their neighbor as Christ has taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? Yes, yes. And as the godparents are ready to help the parents of these children in their duty? Yes, yes. Good. Then... Serafina and Vito, the Church of God receives you with great joy. In her name I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior. Then after me I invite your parents and godparents to do the same.
You may be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one. You asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. That way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. May the word of the Lord be on my mind and on my lips and in my heart. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet, while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed at, at what he asked, sorry, amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. So we have two very images that we need to kind of reflect on today. We have Peter in today's Acts of the Apostles passage where he's being very bold, right? Very confident in his faith and even addressing the uh, leaders of the time. 
But that's in comparison to the other apostles, disciples, Peter, that we have in the gospel reading toward the end of Jesus' life. The Peter who runs away, denies Jesus three times. The group of disciples in the uh, upper room, even in today's gospel reading when Jesus appears to them, again, it tells us that they're terrified. So how do we go from being terrified to filled with this great confidence? Same guy, very different approaches. And I think it has to do with the Holy Spirit. In another passage last week's reading, in, in matter of fact, from the gospel reading, when Jesus comes into the upper room, he says, peace be with you. And then it tells us that he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. The readings are trying to help us in our liturgical journey while still celebrating the joy of Easter to begin to reflect upon and contemplate Pentecost and the role of the Spirit in our lives. When I was prepping for the homily this week, I kept on getting stuck in today's gospel reading in that verse where Jesus says to them, you know, questions them, why are they still doubting? Why do they still doubt? Because I kept on thinking to myself, well, why do we doubt? Why do I doubt from time to time? What keeps me in my doubt rather than gives me the faith that I need to be the witness that Jesus calls me to be? Why do I persist? Why do I have reluctance rather than confidence? Because the Lord calls us to be confident, not arrogant, but confident in our faith. But we struggle with confidence. We're reluctant to move from where we're at. We almost become obstinate in our, our denial, obstinate in our sinfulness, obstinate in the fact that we don't want to be the witnesses the Lord calls us to be. But he calls us to something more than what we are. And the only way we can do that is through the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that fills us with that strength. It's the Holy Spirit that fills us with that, that wisdom that we need, right? And if you want to make a Catholic uncomfortable, and it's very easy to make Catholics uncomfortable about their faith, but if you really want to make Catholics uncomfortable about their faith, just look at them and quote a passage of Scripture. Oh, no! How do we respond to that? Right? Because we think we don't know anything about the Bible, even though we quote the Bible throughout the entire Mass. Most people don't even know they're quoting the Bible throughout the entire Mass, but yet we are. Right? And we say, well, you know, when I was young, they used to tell us not to read this Bible. That's actually not true, by the way. They didn't tell you not to read the Bible. They told you not to interpret the Bible. But that was a long time ago. Have you not learned anything since? In any aspect of life? Of course you have. So why are we afraid to learn? Why? Because we're reluctant. We're stubborn in our own sinfulness. We don't want the Spirit in our lives. We want to stay exactly where we're at. Lord, please don't make me move. Please don't make me change. Please don't make me grow. But the Lord wants to change you. The Lord wants to help you to grow. The Lord wants all of that for us. Why? Because he wants us to experience life in its fullness, which we can't do if we're reluctant before the Lord. God wants us to be confident. Think about when you pray. Do you pray in confidence? Or do you pray in doubt and reluctance? Well, you know, I'm going to pray about it, but I don't really know if God's going to hear my prayer. Is that the way the Lord wants us to pray? In doubt, in fear, or in confidence? Yeah, of course the Lord's going to hear our prayers. Now, he may not give you what you want. He's going to always give you what you need. Why do we doubt? Why do we question? And we joke about the fact when we say things like, well, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. Why are, we, why are you not sure you're going to heaven? What kind of life are you living that would lead you to doubt whether or not you're going to heaven? See? 
See the problem with doubt? It doesn't get us anywhere, does it? In any aspect of our lives. We stay in our reluctance, in our obstinance, rather than being filled by the Spirit to live in confidence. To have, be confident in our faith, confident in the truth, and confident in who Jesus Christ is as the Son of God. I really encourage you, especially between now and Pentecost, to pray every day for the gift of the Holy Spirit in your life. That the Holy Spirit come to you to enlighten your mind and to your heart, to move you from your reluctance and your doubt to your confidence. Pray for the Holy Spirit every day. Pray with the Holy Spirit every day. Because being obstinate and reluctant isn't getting us anywhere. Being entrenched in our own sinfulness, being entrenched in our own ignorance, being entrenched in our own doubt is taking us further from the Lord rather than to the Lord. He came into that upper room to fill them with the Holy Spirit, to help them to understand the truth and to give them the grace that they needed to be confident enough to be witnesses. How can we be witnesses if we're in doubt? We can only be witnesses if we're filled with confidence. And that confidence can only come from the Holy Spirit. We ask God on this day as we pray to hear us as we ask Him for the gift of the Spirit in our lives, to increase within us the Spirit in our lives so that as we approach Pentecost in the power of the resurrection, we may be embraced by that grace that God intends for us so that we can be faithful to the Lord, faithful witnesses in all that we say and do. Dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, the children you have presented are about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring them up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the cottage of sin and may grow in them day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and profess the faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. Now, as I ask you these questions, I ask you to respond loudly because they need to hear you in Italy. <laughs> do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? And all his empty show. I do. do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of the church which we are, proud to, we are proud to profess in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay, so we're going to do girls before boys, so we're going to have Serafina and her parents and godparents come up first. Right here to my left. Is it your will, therefore, that Seraphina should be, receive baptism in the faith of the church which we have all professed with you? Yes. Lean her over the font, please. <laughs> Seraphina, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay? We have Vito and his parents and godparents come up. Okay, I'm just going to say, the reason she cried was not my fault. Her father took her pacifier out of her mouth. <laughs> Is it your will, therefore, that Vito should receive baptism in the faith of the church, which we have all professed with you? Lean him over the font, please. Vito, I baptize you in the name of the Father 
and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you stand right here? Kind of huddle around this way, and then if Seraphina's family, there we go. Now you're in good place. Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you into his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, so that you may remain a member of Christ, priest, prophet, and king unto eternal life. That's the easy part. <laughs> See she, how quiet she is with that pacifier? <laughs> My dear friends, you become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. May the white garments you wear be a sign to you of your Christian dignity, with your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring it unstained unto eternal life. Okay. And that's a gift from the ladies of the parish. Baptism certificate too. And that's from the ladies in the parish. Okay, okay if I can have the uh, godfathers now, please. And uh, if you can light that off the Paschal candle, Nathan will lower it for you. Okay. Receive the light of Christ. Parents and Godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly, so that your child, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light. And persevering in the faith, may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, grant that you may soon receive his word with your ears and your mouth and to profess the faith with your lips to the glory and praise of God the Father. Amen. Baptized in Christ, you are clothed with Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Congratulations. Okay. Can you blow those out? There we go. Mm -hmm. It's yours to keep. Okay, and there's some holy water. Okay, and you may be seated. You're welcome. Please stand now and let us continue our common prayer as we make our needs known to the Lord. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For church leaders, may the Lord guide them in caring for the physical and spiritual needs of those who serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord grant them fortitude in defending the dignity and sanctity of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are struggling with their faith, that they may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here, may the Spirit renew us in the hope of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit may be joined to the suffering and risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may rise with Christ, especially Jeanette Bida, Robert Giles, and George Zerins. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Mass intentions, John Haley, Sharon Schultz, William Trump, and for the special intentions of Joseph Chaco and Benjamin Schroeder, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Loving, gracious God, we ask you to hear these and all of our prayers, which we offer you humbly through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my friends, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in, e in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her spouse, St. Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Kieran, St. Lawrence, St. Matthias, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Archbishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the religious, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God and the glory of God. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should do it to me, but only to say the word, my soul shall be. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
In thanksgiving for what we have received, we pray, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remember to take your church paper home with you today so that you know what's happening in around the parish. Sky will meet this Wednesday, April 17th at 6.30 in the uh, Carlo Acutis room. All high school students and 8th graders are welcome to attend. Young adults will meet this Wednesday, the 17th, at 7 p.m. The children's offering next weekend, April 20th and 21st, we're asking preschool through fifth graders to bring baby wipes to help uh, with the parish uh, baby shower. Uh, bring the items to Mass, any of the Masses. Today is the last day to pre-register for the, and pay for the Euchre tournament, which is coming up, I think, in a week or two. Um, but you need to sign up in advance if you can. We're not guaranteeing there'll be spots at the door. Next Thursday, the 25th, we're hosting our praise and worship evening and Steve Agrizano is our guest. Uh, it's a parish-wide event, and it is a free event to all. Uh, join us for a comedy murder mystery, The Dinner Detective, on Saturday, May the 18th. Tickets are now on sale through the website. We are getting ready for the Vacation Bible School. This year's theme is scuba, diving into friendship with God. Adult volunteers are needed. Anyone from seventh grade up can volunteer. Please see the bulletin. There'll be a funeral for Robert Giles on Monday, the 15th at 10 a.m. Jeanette Bita on Monday, the 15th at noon, and George Zarens on Friday, the 19th at 10 a.m. May their souls and the souls of all the faithfully departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Um, the, uh, you may notice in the gathering space, there is a statue of the Pieta that we bought just recently, just arrived this week. It's not staying there, nor is it staying in the church. It is actually going out into the uh, area there where we have the Stations of the Cross. Uh, that whole area is going to be re-landscaped. We're going to put in um, uh, wood chips and we're going to plant trees. And we're even putting lights on all of the stations so that you can go there and pray even at night. Uh, on a nice summer's evening, you want to uh, take a walk up, pray. It would be a great thing to do as well. Also, um, the, uh, if you would like to learn more about the role of the laity... Uh, in the church. You're welcome to stop by the uh, 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 Salas Casey room right after Mass um, and learn more about the role of the laity in the church. And I think that's everything I need to tell you. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen. Ciao bella to all the Italians. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone.